Welcome back to No Man's Sky, everybody. Elon Paul here, doing our second episode of our new playthrough in the Worlds edition, our Worlds update of No Man's Sky. So we are in space, as you can see, heading towards the signal source. Now, notice the copper deposit at the bottom right. That's our starter planet. I didn't realize that our engagement that we're going to is on a different planet entirely. So let's go ahead and scan that planet with the C button. It turns out to be a rocky planet, cactus flesh, copper, pyrite, and sodium, which means this could be a warm planet that we've got here, and kind of dusty and everything like that. So we're going to check it out, uh, just leaving our place that we want to set up, set up a base on, and we will try to head back to that same place uh, later, and I'll show you how to do that. In the meantime, we are approaching the signal source about 20 seconds out. So we're going to, in this episode, continue the Artemis storyline, as it's called, and we're going to see what she entails and what what it is about her that we're going to be doing uh, uh some some missions for so i'm going to get to the signal source and see what it is and boom all right so we're headed on our way staying up high will give us the opportunity to uh go just a little bit faster while we're flying before we plunge into the atmosphere So here we are. Signal source is an approximate location. So as you slow down, try to do a scan, see if that brings up anything. It may not. And we're gonna scan around. We're gonna just use simply our eyes to see if there's something nearby. Ooh, that might be it right there. Okay, let's go ahead and land here and see what this is about. Maybe this is it, maybe not, but we'll find out. Okay, it says first contact, and hey, we chose the right spot, apparently. Excellent. So, as usual, it's, it's early game. We're going to pick up whatever resources we can find. It looks like at nighttime it's kind of cold here, negative 74. In my experience, that temperature is not terrible. About 5 to 10 degrees warmer will automatically not kick in the cold protection. So, yeah, we, we should drop slowly. Uh, looks like we can't grab that yet, so it's too far down. We'll be able to dig it out later with the right tools. And what do we got here? The sparking wires of the machine generate a signal, tapping out its broadcast into the void. Whoever left this message is long gone. Decipher it. Decoding, 161616, entry 4925C. No fuel in, pssst. Failed to reach station, hazard protection low. No choice but to, pssst, underground, pssst deployed base computer. As well as the log entry, the signal contains plans for a base computer and a terrain manipulator. Guess what we're about to get. With any luck, the base computer will hold more information about whoever is leaving these messages. Extract the plans. And there it is. It requires 30 chromatic metal to make a base computer, so we're going to find out how to build that. And we get a terrain manipulator, which requires two carbon nanotubes and dihydrogen jelly. So, first thing we want to do is do the terrain manipulator. So let's get that put in here. Uh, I'm going to put it all the way over. You know what? Let's move you over here. We'll put the terrain manipulator right next to you. There it is. Now obviously we need two of those and one of those. So let's go back to our exosuit. Two carbon nanotubes. It requires a hundred carbon. Looks like we have plenty. And one dihydrogen jelly. Looks like we have enough dihydrogen to get that. Go back to the multi-tool. It is now complete, fully charged as well. Excellent. So it's now in here, and if you look over here, remember this thing we couldn't get now? We can now dig down to it and take it. There we go. Now, what you get from the ground itself when you hit it is something called silicate powder. That can be used, no, I'm not doing that, to recharge your terrain manipulator. This here. So, my suggestion is, is that you gather up as much of it as you can, get a, a few hundred of it to begin with. Now, when you're in the terrain manipulator, let me, let me change tools for a second. Okay, when you're in terrain manipulator, the first hit is your actual digging tool, if you will. It's in a medium setting, and you can pick up stuff in a medium setting. If you hit your R button, you can go to a smaller setting, which is a much finer hole for gathering up certain resources. And if you go to the T, you can get back to medium and then to large, which will really dig some terrain out. 
and make you a big hole in the ground, right? All right, now over time, the terrain will regenerate by Hello Games usually every week, so don't build them to the ground if you can manage it. Now, you got other selections. If you hit your center button, you can switch to creating ground, see? Or you hit it again, and you get a flattening tool, which allows you to flatten the ground. You get powder for that, see? Look at that. It's also a good way that if you need resources this way, you can gather it up a lot quicker. As you can see, the numbers are flying up the chart there. I usually like to get about three, 400 of it to start with. There we go. There we go. Clear that out. Hey, don't you clear out. There we go. All right. Your next setting brings to the creation portion. And if you do this, it will bring back what you have dug out. It doesn't cost any power or any resources to do so. So it will rebuild and reform everything in here slowly as you can see. Okay? And then finally, one more press gets you back to the digging tool. And there you go. Ooh, condensed carbon. I'm going to switch back to my mining beam and gather up my condensed carbon because, again, this is a precious resource to find very close by that you can gather up. And you obviously know I was running low on dihydrogen, so I'm going to gather up some of this, too, because I just have a feeling I might need it later. Ooh, good. We got a crystal fragment out of it. Crystal fragments of dihydrogen only get you one thing, more dihydrogen. As you see, I got three of them. We're up to 80, 20, 166, 200. There we go. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So we got a good amount of resources here. Next, we need to get some copper. Copper allows us to make chromatic metal. Now, you notice the planet is a 66.7 degrees, so it's actually a comfortable temperature for us to reside in. So that's going to be good. Now, this... If you look at the uh, F button at the top, at the left-hand side, it tells you that it has infrequent dust storms. So we can have storms once in a while. Uh, it has numerous resources. It's limited fauna and typical flora, as well as minimal sentinels. So if we scan one of these guys here, it'll tell us how many there are. There we go, one of five. So right on the money, there's a second flying creature here. All right, any more flying creatures? There was one over there, but I can't quite see it. There we go. Let's get zoomed in. Scan it before it vanishes. Three. We have three creatures we have discovered in the air. Let's see where the others are. Let's go to our discovery menu. And we have an underground, two underground creatures. So there's no actual ground-based creatures. The rest of them are underground. So for underground, obviously, you want to look towards caves. And they're going to be kind of tough to find once in a while. It takes them a while to spawn in an underground cavern. So... Just keep your eyes open. There's only so much you can do. Looks like we got one. Um, kind of buried in there, I guess. Let's take a look. Yep, it's on the other side of this cropping here. Deeper in the cave. Yep, there it is. Right there. I can't quite make it out. It must be tiny. Oh, there it is, right there. Kind of stuck. It's kind of glitching out. So we do have it. So that's another one that we just got. So take a look around now. Some of these underground creatures like to reside at the front of the cave. Sometimes out in the open. Ooh, let's grab five more of these so we have a full stack, shall we? One, two, three, four... Five. Okay, so now we have a full stack of those. That'll give us some money. Alright, very hard to get out of here. <laughs> there we go. And I doubt we're going to have any more animals here. We might get lucky and the fifth one will show up, but I doubt that's going to happen. Now, we do need to get copper, so the nearest one we have is, let's see, seven, 900 that way, 700 there, 431 seems to be pretty close. Any over here? Pyrite is very handy, so if you can get it, get it. Ooh, copper's right close by. 130 and 200. So let's head that direction. Oops, almost. Almost made it. 
Alright, so we're going to switch over to our terrain manipulator. My suggestion in copper is to go to the smallest setting, so when you shoot one time, hit the R button to make sure you're in your smallest setting to gather up the most resources. Early game, it's a good idea. Even though it says you'd only gather 60, get as much as you can. You're going to need it. Otherwise, you're just going to keep going back over and over and over again and getting more. So gather as much from this as you can. If you scooch out to the sides a little bit and get some silicate, that's okay. Don't worry about it. You need it anyway. Try to gather up the entire amount out of this one cropping. This is kind of a small one, but we should end up with at least four or five hundred, I think. It is boring. The resource gathering is always the boringest part of this, but it's necessary. It's necessary for everything you want to make. And chromatic metal, copper especially, is going to be very handy early game, so let's make sure we get the best of it. Get the most of it. Do the most. Do what you can. Try to have fun. No matter what you're doing, though, try to just have fun at the game. All right. Down we go. Now I'll gather up the rest. And that should do it. Okay. Let's see how much we ended up with. Go into our inventory. A lot less than I thought. We didn't quite make 300, but there was another one right there. Let's grab some more. It's not enough for me. I want more. Now, if you haven't changed out from your manipulator, it should already be in the small mode. You should be able to grab this other small deposit, too. So maybe between the two of them, we'll get about 500. Looks like this one's kind of a dirty one. You'll see some of the silicate powder is mixed up in it in certain spots. But that's okay. We'll get what we can. I just want to go to a medium setting for this one and just gather it up quicker. Because it is what it is. We might get more. Whoop. Okay. We'll use our silicate powder to recharge that. Okay. And we'll go ahead and grab some extra silicate while we're here. And it looks like we got it all. Any more? No? No. How much did we end up with? Yep, we're up to almost 500. Great if we could find just a couple more. Whoops, I just fell in here. Be great if we could get three more. Copper. Two. No, huh? Hoping to get one more out of it. That. Let's see how much we ended up with. 4.99. 4.99. I hate uneven numbers. It drives me nuts. This one? Did we get one more out of it? There it is. We just got one. Alright, 500. We're all set. That makes me happy. Let's head back to our ship. There's a second reason why you want an even number than an odd, because basically it's a two-to-one ratio on the copper to chromatic metal. So an odd number, when you get down to one, it will just simply delete the one. Okay. Back into our refiner. Setting this to 80. All of our copper in there. 250, see? Let it go. It's going to take about a minute and a half. Uh, is there any resources you need while you're waiting? Looks like we have a good amount of ferrite for now. Uh, our carbon's starting to run a little low. That's not terrible, but it is a little bit lower than we want. So why don't we go ahead and get rid of the cobalt, too? We don't need that. Um, let's go ahead and get some carbon. Uh, I need a plant. Let's go back over here. Switch to our mining beam. Good. Do we have any plants? That's not a plant. Anything that shows up as a plant. What you're looking for. There we go. An identified plant go. Now, planets that don't have many plants tend to give a lot of carbon in return. So since this is one of those planets, I'm going to grab as much carbon as I can because, my gosh, I've already got almost a thousand carbon and we haven't even been blasting too long, so this is fabulous. It's good to have a lot of carbon if you can manage it. Wow. 
I'll grab some ferrite dust too. I don't think we're going to get much out of it. But it's good to have some extra. More carbon. I'm just greedy that way. Look at that, 362 more. Good grief, that's fantastic. See, we're almost overheated too. All right. Let's see what we got. Let's get the geode gone. 500 that. Ooh, we got plenty of carbon now. This makes me happy. All right, good deal. Let's head back to the ship. Uh, it should be done by now. There we go. Now, if you don't go in there, you just go to pick it up. It'll give you everything back. The carbon and, you see, 250 chromatic metal. So, we can now build a base computer. But you know what? We're not building it here. You know where we're building it. We don't want a base on this planet. Up we go. Alright, so the planet we want is not either one of those. Let's check them out, though. I'm going to head towards that one. That's probably the one where we started. Yep, that's the planet we started on. And that one we haven't been to. Let's scan it. It's a Sporo planet. doesn't have much to it, but we got copper, gold, and, and sodium. I should have grabbed some pyrite while we were here. Let's do that real quick. I know it's kind of redundant going here, but pyrite is used to recharge certain pieces of equipment, and since this planet has it as a resource, it would be a good idea for us to get some. I recommend it anytime. Alright, let's go... Let's find ourselves a landing pad if we can. That'll be great. We're not going to be in the same general area, but we'll be close. Alright, looks like we got something over there that's really far out. I'm going to hit the ground there. Probably a landing pad. You discover something that far out, that's a full minute out away from you, that usually is what it is. It's a landing pad. I'm gonna do another scan, see if there's anything closer by. Yeah, that's really far. Can't even believe we actually picked up on it that far out. That's unusual, so it's good to check that out. What happens is, is you got a lot of uh, ships that land at these uh, landing platforms, or trading platform as it's called. See, that is a base that it's got... A, no, actually, that is a uh, uh, beacon to help finding you a trading platform, but looks like we've already found ours. I like to keep scanning when I'm looking for stuff, because it gives me an opportunity to find things that I don't normally find. Alright, good deal. And as you can see, I was right. Wait for the turn, wait for the icon to turn green, and then you can... Okay. Sometimes land. There we go. It should have accepted it immediately. Landing platforms have a lot of these here, too, so you can pick up these. That gives you some items. Always a good idea. There we go. Another microprocessor. Fantastic. Okay, and what you get too is you get people landing. You can go to these guys and trade with them. They don't usually carry a whole lot. Sometimes they carry something special. Usually it's one set of items. You see they do carry starship launch fuel and they do have some tritium on board in this case. So that's good. And you can also sell your items to them. So be careful what you sell though. You don't want to sell something you need. Uh, like these albumin pearls. We're going to get a little bit of a disc. They're going to get a discount on them, but that's okay. We don't need them. We're going to keep our salvage data even though it's worth a lot of money. And we'll keep the residual goop for now, and there's really nothing else. I'll keep those microprocessors. And he has nothing else for us. We should probably get an achievement for making some money. It'll probably happen in just a moment. But before we do, we check out here. Ooh, they got exosuit upgrade charts here. These are very handy to upgrade your exosuit, of course, obviously by the name. Uh, also got some nice items in here. We can get some starship launch fuel if you want. Some more ferrite dust, some microprocessors. Ugnium, that could come in handy as well. So it has a good amount of items here. Plus, one of the things you may have noticed in that menu when we were talking to them is you can purchase their ship from them. So that could come in handy. Anyway, so we're going to go ahead and call it here and leave this area. There we go. There's our journey milestone. There you go, trader. So got two stars on the trader uh, aspect of things. Plus, you can scan these ships and see what kind of ships they are. 
So we got a shuttle. That's an S-Class ship. Wow. You don't see too many S-Class ships landing at platforms, no matter what model and style they are. So, anyway, let's go ahead and get out of here. Good to know. So it wants us to drop the base computer down, remember? So what we're going to do is we're going to head out into space, like we said before, and let's find our planet that we were going to. I think it was this way. Is that it? I don't know if that's it or not. It's fine. Probably not. Nope, that's one we haven't been to. Let's scan it. The nuclear planet. Ooh, you know, we never got the pyrite. Ah, eh, it's okay. We'll come back. I'm already messing up here. Um, did we scan that one yet? Looks like we got a lot of planets in the system. That's really far out there. Airless planet. That could be pretty cool. Alright, the planet we want to go to is seems to be on the other side of this. So let's get to the other side of the planet. We have plenty of tritium now, so we can recharge our systems at least three or four times before we have to worry about any problems. Alright, that should be far enough. And there it is. So that's where we're headed. Now, remember the coordinates I wrote down last time and I showed you? So we want to find negative 4.42 and positive 123. So negative 4.5, positive 123. So we're going to head to Arjo. And we're going to create a base there for ourselves. The good thing about this Paradise Planet 2 is that the base station is close by. So anytime we got to go there, we have a quick jump. We'll probably be able to take a portal there. But it allows us to go straight back and forth there on a regular basis, so that should be pretty good. Now we're on approach, and I think where it's pointing is the spot we want to head to. So I'm going to kind of aim for there. should get us where we're going. Alright, actually we do want to stay in first person view. Because at the left hand side is where our coordinates should be for finding this place. Let's go ahead and recharge our pulse engine. Technology recharge. Go. Alright. So, see the numbers 4,000, 3,000 as we come in close to the planet. There we go. All right, so we're pretty close. Let's watch our numbers here, okay? We want negative what? <clears throat> negative four, right? So we want that number on the left to climb, or get larger, if you will. There we go. And the other one to get larger, too. So we want to head this way. All right, it's climbing at a good rate, so let's go this way just a little bit. We want the other one to climb a little bit faster. So the place we're headed for is in this direction, it looks like. Very nice. It's a very pretty planet. It's not the perfect planet in my book. But it's close. Let's go up a little higher. See if we can get a little more speed. We're at 167 speed right now. There we go. Two fifty, almost three hundred. Nice. Leveled out, dropped a little bit, but that's okay. It'll change with the terrain below us as well. So we want to get to 123 on the rightmost number, and then 4.5 on the leftmost number. So I think a little bit this way. There we go. Back this way. Should be coming up on it now. 122, so it should be right in front of us. I think it's right in there. There it is. Found it. See? That's how you use coordinates. A 
let's go ahead and put our base computer down. Now, this planet normally doesn't have storms, but because of the storyline that we're in, it will give us a storm at least one time, maybe twice. So here we go, we're gonna put our base computer down. I'm gonna put my base a little further away from the platform than I normally do. I'm gonna go over here with it, I think. Yeah, this looks good. All right. Cart, cart outpost, excellent. Searching the records. Universal Archive search reveals no prior claims on this site. Sonar test confirms site is suitable for construction. Claim this. Does a pullback? Go ahead and land here. Now, will I build a base on one of those islands? Possibly. And there we go. Base is now online. Let's go ahead and into the base computer. Accessing log from previous user, uh, entry 4925D follows. Storm sweeping across, bzz, but su construction supplies low. Positing shelter plans while bzz, need to bzz, back soon. Extract plans. And there we go. We're getting our first construction plans for building a base. And we need to build it now. I suggest building right away. Make sure you have all that carbon on you you need. So we're going to build right here. I'm just going to do a quick build. I'm going to do about six, I think. See? Superheated re rainstorm. Normally we don't have that. Let's do eight. We should be able to build a lot of these panels. Second thing we need to do is build a... a, a door, which as you can see, required pure ferrite. So I'm going to put one on the back, and I'm going to put one on the front, and I'm going to build one more over here. Next thing I'm going to do is put some walls up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There we go. Now the storm's starting to affect me. Eight. Okay, we got all the walls. And now finally we need a roof. I, I prefer these. I, actually, I'm going to go with this roof this time. It requires ferrite dust, as you can see. Now, if you move around, it's kind of a pain in the neck. But if you hit the B button, like it shows you up there, you can actually do a third-person view and build it yourself. And we are now protected. Oh, did I accidentally put it on the ground over here? I sure did. All right, so if you go back to the menu and hit the C button, you can pick it up. Pick that one up. Put him back. There we go. See? Cool. And then we're out. And we're inside of our shelter and protected. And these have a little bit of a lighting scheme to it, so they'll be able to light you up just a little bit. All right, so we're good. Now, another thing you can do, too, if you go back into your build menu and hit C, you can grab your base computer, and you can put it in here someplace. I'm going to put mine in the corner over here. There we go. Looks good, doesn't it? All right. Accessing log from previous user. Additional archives recovered. Entry 4925E follows. Construction largely bzz, a success. Recovered salvage data from nearby bzz, plans logged. Scans and indicate additional subterranean devices. Beginning search. So we're going to extract those plans. Whoever recorded these logs evidently had some success. I have access to their plans, and perhaps I can learn from their efforts. So now we have something called the Construction Research Unit. We need 20 magnetized ferrite and one carbon nanotube to build such a device. So let's go ahead and do that. So we need to put our portable refiner down. I'm going to put it right down in here. And we're going to go ahead and access it, drop some fuel in. Okay, so the first thing we need is we need magnetized ferrite, right? So to build that, let's find out again, uh, requires 20 magnetized ferrite. You can make that from pure ferrite. Pure ferrite, however, it's a 2 to 1 ratio to get magnetized. So in order to do that, there we go. I need to make that much. So let's go ahead and make that 20 magnetized. There we go. And we're going to put the pure ferrite away. And we need to make a carbon nanotube, I think it said. There we go. We're all done. So now we can build our construction unit. We're going to put that one right next to this one here. We'll be taking that with us anyway. Okay. See, more storms. The storms will usually happen until you get to a certain stage, and then you won't get any more storms on this planet. Analysis unit online. Diagnostic 
Diagnostic Suggestion. Users should recover salvage data from buried technology, equip and utilize an analysis visor. So it's probably a good idea. I'm not going to go into that yet because we only have four salvage data and we need a lot more. So anything we need to do while we're here, we need to put this in our ship. So if you hit the X button, you can then transfer it to your ship. Okay, let's get that going. Hold on. So that goop, where is it? We put the goop in here, it turns to viscous fluids. Let's go ahead and get that going. We'll do that first. But what we're also going to do is we're going to take this uh, rusted metal and turn it into ferrite as well. Um, we should have gotten everything off of there. So we got a nice little spot for our base here. It's, it's not very pretty, let's be clear. But it gets us a starting point. And it's big enough inside that we can expand outwards and we can do a lot more in here. And there are some things I really, really, really want to get. So why don't we why don't we check it out? Let's check it out in the construction unit real quick. We're going to take the buildable technology. As you can see, it gives us the ability to build a teleport module. Go ahead and grab it. We've got two to, to get it with. Requiring sodium, carbon nano, nanotubes, pardon me, and metal plating. Next thing we're going to do is get our biofuel reactor. That's going to provide power. And then we get the wiring for free. So we got everything we need here. We could use one more item. We really could use these. And that requires, as you can see, 11 of these items. Um, so that's going to take a little bit to, to get all that. So I think we want to go out and buy some more. But for the time being, we can go ahead and rename our base. Let's go ahead and do that. So you go up here, you select it, and you can name it whatever you want. Now, I usually name things after me, right? Makes sense. Lot Paul. Base Alpha. I like that. So it's my first base on a paradise planet. I like it. That's going to give us the achievement. Oh, now it wants me to craft four metal plates. Okay, should we have the ferrite for it? I think we do. One, two, three, four. Okay. This is done, so let's go ahead and keep things moving along. We're going to turn this into living slime now. Uh, we also need to car craft two carbon nanotubes back and forth between the two things you need to do. Excellent, right? And now it tells us to construct the module. So this we're going to construct right now. Um, I am going to choose to put it at this end. Yeah, let's put it at this end into this corner straight out. There we go. Not perfectly straight, but it should do fine. The next thing it's going to tell us is that we need to power it, right? So to do that, we need, here's is your power icon. We're going to use our biofuel reactor. We need another metal plate. So let's make one. Okay, there we go. Let's put a biofuel reactor down right next to it. Okay, and the problem is, is that it's not wired up. So we've got to put a wire between them. So let's get this one, and we're going to put the wire from there to there. Kind of ugly looking, but it does the trick. Finally, we go into our biofuel reactor, and we need to power it. We can either use oxygen condensed carbon or carbon to power this up with. We've got plenty of carbon, so let's go ahead and drop it in. 50 hours of power. It's providing 20... Pardon me, it's providing 50... I don't know what the KP stands for. Kilo, kilopowers? <laughs> and you only need 20. So, there you go. We have now a base terminus or teleporter that we can use. Looks like this is done again, so we're going to put these back in one more time for... Refining into runaway mold again. You see how that works. So all three of those combined it takes some time to do it So to me, it's not worth it But I want to at least show you the process of getting these into here and how they turn into runaway mold and at a five to one ratio We're gonna get what 13 Yeah, it's not really worth it to be honest Second thing we can do while we're in here looking at the construction data so this is the buildable technology. You notice you can go to another spot. So if we go this way, we can get more product in here. So we can get stairs, we can get different types of roofing materials, smaller timber floor panels. We can even get glass uh, frontage with, with uh, windows and stuff like that if we wanted to as well. So, but that's pretty much about all you're gonna get, the different stone structures and stuff like that. And that brings us back to technology. It is kind of limited, but we do need more. We do need more. All right. 
So that should do it. Let's go back into our portable refiner. And we're going to put this in. This only takes a few moments. And we'll get 16 out of it, not 13. I, my math was off on that. I'm sure you're all laughing at me about that. And there we go. And you notice the extra one is gone. Finally, we're going to throw our metal in here. And we're going to charge it up the rest of the way. Because this is going to take a little bit. All right, so that's going to be done. Now, what I want to do is I want to look for buried technology. Now, there should be some floating around here. It looks like there's some right there. So let's go ahead and grab it. Can't grab it ourselves, so we're going to have to use our terrain manipulator to dig down to it. There it is. Okay. I don't like the hole in the ground here, so I'm going to fill it back in. There you go. Pretty cool, huh? All right, we got some broken machinery here. It not only gives nanites. I'm not going to get. I'm not going to take the viscous fluids this time. It not only gives nanites, but sometimes it can give upgrades. But it gave nanites this time, so I wanted to make sure you were aware of that. So as we look around, any of these icons like this are buried technology. We got one 322 blocks away, units away. 311 over there. Early game, they're only usually going to give us two of them. Okay, so let's head to this one. This one looks like it's going in a good direction. you notice there's also something here called a buried mineral formation. I'll go ahead and show you that. Go ahead and scan some animals on this planet. Okay, here's the buried mineral formation right here. Let me show you this real quick. This is what they look like. It's usually a good idea to grab it. You have to cut it out with a mining beam and you get something called a glowing mineral. And if you open it up with the E button and analyze it, you'll sometimes get something of value out of it. Usually a good idea to grab them when you can, especially early game. Um, looks like that's also buried technology, so that's good. Looks like we got some subterranean relics. Not very valuable at all. All right, so where is our... Hmm, got ancient data structures over there too. All right, let's head this way. Oop, we got some animals we can scan. All right, good deal. So we got two of the eight species on the planet. I don't see any others for now. All right, let's head to our buried technology, shall we? A lot of the, the research and stuff that you're going to do on planets is going to be by foot. Yes, I could jump on my ship and fly over, but you go through a lot of launch fuel that way. Early game, your launch thrusters are not efficient at all, and you burn through launch fuel very quickly. So whenever you can, try to do it this way. See, I don't have to dig for this one. We should get at least two every time. And usually this early in the game, that's what you're going to get. I'm going to grab some of this condensed carbon because it's here, and I need it. There we go. All right, do we have another technology module nearby? We got one at 105, so that's pretty close. Jettison pods. Okay, good. Let's head that direction. All right, there we go. Is it close enough? To yep, it is. So there's two more. So that's four. We're up to five right now. We've got one at 388, one at 376. Is there any closer by? Let's find out, shall we? We'll check out the ancient data structures, too. Yeah, let's go in that direction. How far away is that? 183? And we'll go after those afterwards. So the ancient data structures can carry upgrades from time to time. Most of the time, an exosuit upgrade, and occasionally you'll get either a ship or a multi-tool upgrade. They're good to find. And while there's no sentinels here, wow, this is quite a field of them. Sentinels don't like you picking this stuff. Wow. Grab as much as you can. Very, very valuable later, and we'll show you why for early game. All right, we got the entire field of them. Wow. How many did we get? Got about 15 or 20 of them. That is fantastic. All right, so we need more. Very technology at 272. And then 354. 
Is that another buried mineral? Yes, we'll grab that. Right there. Oop. There you go. Sometimes you can find them in clumps. Sometimes there'll be a second one there. Oop, there is a second one there. Wow, look at that. Alright, so let's open both of them up. We'll get... Okay, crystal sulfide, not very valuable, and granatine. Grantine, pardon me. So these two are worth about 25000 each. Very handy to get. Early game, I would sell them, but as you start to progress, even just a little bit, you probably want to hang on to them as you come across them. So we could get another buried mineral right there. Let's go ahead and head towards it. I love getting these. Ah, knowledge stone. Knowledge stones are very handy. Okay, let's grab this one. Okay. Knowledge stones will teach you a word in the language of the, of the system, whoever owns the system. I won't go reading through that right now. So we got a new word that we just learned. And that's the first time you go through it, it will do that to you. It'll just suck you right in. But every time a knowledge stone comes, ac you come across one, just as you're running past, go ahead and, and ping it real quick. It'll be much quicker. Got a lot of flying animals on this uh, planet. We never checked our rock, did we? Dirty bronze, 25,000 as well. This, this, the crystal sulfides are much cheaper. You might want to hang on to those. Okay, there's our very tech. Looks like it's with a piece of broken machinery as well. Ouch, that hurt. Oop, careful. Oh, I thought we were hitting it. I don't know what we're... Oh, I know what's happening. Plant in front of it is getting in the way. There we go. Alright, so there's our buried technology. Alright, so how many do we get out of that one? Two again? Yep, two again. Let's see what our damage machinery holds. And you'll be doing this a lot. Most of your early game is going to be collecting all this. Looks like we got nothing. Hold on again. Nanites this time, okay. Alright. Our ship is back this way. Right? Yes, there it is. It looks like we have some buried technology right there. Let's go ahead and hit that one as well. And how much berry tech are we up to? Nine. We definitely need two more at the very least. The more we can get, the better. But as time goes by, you'll be able to pick up three and sometimes four. So that's it's very handy to come up when you come across these to do what you got to do. All right. Can we pick this up normally? Yes, we can. All right. We got two more out of that, right? Good, good, good. All right. Looks good. I would love to grab some more. Let's grab one more just to have a little extra on hand. And then we'll check out the rest of the Artemis storyline as we are progressing. Looks like we've got a... See the purple icon on the screen there? That is a knowledge stone. I know. Life support's getting low. There you go. See? There it is. And watch what happens when we get close. We're just going to hit it and it just teaches us a word. We're done. All right, so this one is by itself. Again, let's see if we can pick it up if it's close. Yep, we can. There we go. That should give us at least two more. There we go. Good. Anything in this direction while we're running? We're going to be heading back to our place over there. you got plants on this planet, which are good for you, but we're not going to grab them just yet. Okay, let's head back. We're going to get one more word while we're here. Be careful with the things you run into. There's one of our knowledge stones. Let's get a third word while we're here. Word is. You can learn thousands upon thousands of words. While we're here, let's recharge, shall we? I got two gels now, so I'm going to use one. That'll get me fully charged. All right, on we go. I don't think there's anything more here that we can grab. Yeah, our ship is a lot closer, and so is our residence. Okay, we have about 13 buried tech on us. So let's go in here and utilize it. In here. Okay. So we're going to get a battery, and we're going to get a solar panel. 
Okay, solar panels require gold to make them. If you have enough from some of the asteroids you got, I should be able to get two of them. That will be really, really good. And you require a lot of chromatic metal. We, get a, we need a hundred of it for two of them. Um, we need metal plates, of course. Let's see. We should have enough. And do we have enough gold? I think our ship has it. Yes, our ship does have enough. Okay, good. So we need some metal plates. Let's make... Whoop, not in our ship. Let's make it over here. One, two. Okay, so that'll give us our solar panels. We need two of those. You can put them inside or outside if you really, really want to be nice. <laughs> we walked too far away from our ship. Alright, so we're going to put one there. One there. Now, battery is handy. Battery requires 60 magnetized ferrites. So let's go to here, and we're going to put 120. There we go. We only need one battery. So in order to get 60 magnetized ferrite, we need 120 pure. And we'll be taking this uh, refiner with us when we're done. And there we go. And the battery will store energy, so those solar solar panels obviously are not active during the night time, but during the day they'll produce about 50 of each, and during dusk and dawn it drops down to 25. Yes, obviously it's way more than we need, but it'll help charge up our battery. Alright, let's pick this up, take it with us, and now we can make our battery. We just need one, like I said. It doesn't make a difference where in the scheme of things you build it. So I'm just going to put it right here, leaving room for more. Let's get our electrical wiring hooked up. One, two, two, three, three, four. Okay, got a complete circuit. And if you look at your battery, you can see that it's storing a charge right now. These things can store about 45,000. So that'll be good. And these aren't doing anything right now, but this is producing more than can be used by that. So this will be a very nice circuit to have here. All right, so we're good to go. Let's move on with our mission. Accessing log from previous user. Additional archives recovered. Entry 4925F follows. Scanner detected unusual broadcast. Bzz, repeating 16 bzz, from the space station. Warning. End of archive. Records interrupted. The base computer archives have reached their end. It seems there is nothing more we'll learn from them. My predecessor seem, appears to have left their base and headed to the space station. So, guess where we're headed for the first time. Remember that broken ship we acquired in our first episode? Yep, we're going to be using that here in just a moment. So, Radiant Pillar, we're on our landing platform. Now, if we if we teleport back to the base, we our, our jet, our apartment jet, our ship will not land on the... I don't believe it. It is literally... I thought our space station was right here. Okay, well, it is what it is. It will put our ship right next to the building, but not on a landing platform, unless it's a landing platform that we constructed, which we do not have access to yet. This is the reason for the extra doors that I put on my base. One is going to lead to the landing platform, one out to the front, and one out to the side. I always like to have that, just in case. So apparently, our space station's over here. So all those weird lines that we had behind us, all those trade lines that we saw, were just trade lines and nothing more. So I am traveling a very long way to get to the space station. So this lowered its expectations down as far as the system I would really like to have. A paradise planet with islands next to the space station. And as you can see, it's going to require a lot of fuel to get there until we can get some upgrades for our launch fuel and for our pulse drive. This is going to be very costly every time we want to come to the space station. Fortunately, we're about to make a few million. Alright, the opening for the space station is always going to be on the other side, facing a big planet. There is our introductory music to the space stations. Ooh, purple hue on this one, that's pretty. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the space station. All right, so we got to check out the space station here. Now, most of the entities that we talk to in the space station are not going to do anything right now. So we will have 
to get past some of the storyline before we can do much with them. So in here, if we want to sell some items, we can. You know, we picked up a couple things like granitine, dirty bronze, some crystal sulfide, which we're going to hang on to for now because it really isn't worth selling. The lemium. We're going to keep the salvage data. So we're going to hang on to the rest of the stuff that's in here. You also have access to your starship inventory if you want to sell any of this. I'm going to go ahead and hang on to it for now. Okay, so that's where we stand. And we can see what items they sell in larger quantities than any of the bases we've been to, including that elusive wiring loom. Uh, and we can get pyrite here as well. I am going to get the pyrite. I'm going to put it in my ship inventory. It is useful as fuel. It does cost a lot, but well worth it. And there we go. So, yes, it costs us a lot of money, but I am not going to turn that down. All right. We can also do other things here. We can adjust our exosuit and our appearance. We can build the ship if we had parts for it. And we can do other things with other ships here. Let me show you what we can do. This is going to give us our money thing. Yep, money maker. We didn't make a whole lot more than they're saying. So our ship that's over there, by the way, what we're going to do is we're going to go into our inventory here, summon vehicles, switch our dock ship to the broken one. Is there anything in the broken one that we need? Let's check. Nope, none of these things are uninstallable and there's no inventory in them. So we're going to go over to this little station right here. And there's two things we can do. Well, more than one, two things we can do, but we, we begin salvage analysis. It'll give us the opportunity to claim scrap worth over two and almost two and a half million or extract a piece of the ship to build ships with. I'm just going to scrap it because we need the money early game. It's going to make sure we're sure about that. Confirm that. Yes. And what we get in returns, we get items that are valued at that amount of money, usually including upgrade modules. In this case, we've got a hyperdrive module that we can now put in our ship, as well as a storage augmentation. Very, very valuable. Hang on to that. Plus a shield module. So let's use our hyperdrive module in our ship. I'm going to go ahead and put it in, even though we don't have hyperdrive yet. I'm going to put it there. And as far as shield is concerned, we're going to get into fights once in a while. I'm going to go ahead and use the one we have, even though it's not really very valuable. It'll help increase our shield strength just a little bit. But, it's, but every little bit counts. Okay, so we're done here. Now we need to do the thing. Find life forms to ask about the mysterious signal. Let's go up onto the upper level here. There's the life form. Okay, we don't understand. He's a geck. The alien squeals as I approach. They seem excited to see me, though I cannot understand their babbling tongue. Perhaps they would recognize the signal mentioned by the base computer. So we're going to ask about 16. A look of surprise crosses the life form's face, and they release a strange smelling gas. This appears to signify our conversation is over. So we basically mentioned the number 16, and he farted at us. Fantastic. Gotta love it. How about you, sir? Traveler Entity. I have no idea what he's saying otherwise. The alien's elegant metallic shell springs to life as I approach. They study me. Lights flash around their visor. Perhaps they know something about the message left at the base computer. Please look past over the life form's visor. The number has, has had some strange effect on them. They seem reluctant to speak further. Okay, one more. How about you, buddy? What do you got to say? Something about Traveler. The metallic being chatters away, pouring forth words in a language I cannot understand. When I blink, I see the same red, same red light that stared at me at the distress beacon. Remember what I talked about red and purple in the first episode? This is the red light, or the atlas. Repeat 16. We, and it says it in red, are watching you, traveler friend. Find what we have left you. Interesting. Though the alien speaks, the words are not their own. A string of code is echoed back to me through the red glare, logged directly to my exosuit. The crimson light fades away, and I see the life form staring at me through its visor. Whatever's happened, they do not appear to have seen it. I should leave. Perhaps my base computer will be able to make something of this code. So we are done with this area now. Now, we talk to any of the vendors and stuff that are here. They're just going to ignore us. So let's go ahead and leave. We could talk to ship's occupants too, but the same thing is going to happen. Let me see if this guy... Let me just give you an example. Hopefully, maybe he'll talk to us. Uh, looks up, swiftly scans me, then reveals their catalog of maps and charts. Oh, we might be able to get away, uh, away with this. Yes, we can. We're going to exchange specific charts. I'm about to teach you something here in this episode that's going to be very, very valuable to you. Exchange specific charts. Now, remember those 21 um, 
navigation datas that we have, we can exchange them for charts here. So we can find other crash ships if we wish, or we can exchange them for an exosuit upgrade chart. Why is that important? Oh yeah, you want to upgrade your suit, right? No, that's not what this is for. You want to make money fast? Three charts will get you one of these. There we go. We got seven of them, right? And here they are in our inventory over there on the left. Now remember the other stuff that we gathered, like these things? These things we got to sell in order to make the money that we were supposed to make. So let's go over to our trade terminal here, and we're going to sell these things. Okay, sell. And recycled circuitry, it gets us a half a mil. The subatomic regulators, see there, 1.8 million. Uh, let's see, spool of nano cables, 84,000. We could sell that too if we want, but I'm hanging on to it. The storage augmentation is great for ships. The exosuit charts that you gathered, you're going to get nearly a million for them. So go ahead and sell them. And look what you ended up with, 3.5 million early game. That is phenomenal. So that'll get us the tycoon ranking on our on our achievements. Any moment now it'll pop up. Any moment now. The navigation data is used, and there it is, is used for pulling your ship in at locations if you need. So watch it go through the different various settings. 667,000. Enterprising. Magnate. There it is, magnate at maximum. So that's the top most one I could get. So we have achieved the maximum setting in riches at this point. How much money can you carry on your person? You can carry up to 4.25 billion. This is a beautiful solar ship. If you want to buy a ship from somebody, which we can't afford this, but if you want to buy it, go to make an offer on the Lifeform Starship, and it shows you what it looks like. This one has the square sails, which I'm really not fond of but really good ships to explore with. So if you can get one, get one early on in early game. They're definitely worth your time. Explorer class ships are also worth it, but they have to have the symmetry to be of any use to me. Oh, one more thing to do while you're here at the space station. I keep forgetting this. Remember we said we want to upgrade our exosuit at some point? Go to the exosuit vendor up here. You can tell by that little icon right there. Go to this item here. You can only use this one time, but the very first time you use it, it's free if you upgrade your cargo area. If you upgrade up here, it'll cost you a thousand units. And every time you, you use it, it will cost you more. Now, because I have a gap here, 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 and here, I'm going to fill in gaps first. There we go. Okay. So there you go. You can also find multi-tools here. Looks familiar, doesn't it? That's pretty good. It's got the S yes upgrade for your... For your mining beam, even though it's got a bow caster on board. That's really, really cool. Alright, is the other one the same exact one, or is it different? It's the same exact one, but it might be a different class. It is. It is a B-class, but this one comes with two supercharged slots on it, so it's probably very, very valuable. Let's see. Ah, it's not. It's fine. As I thought. So my pistol has eight spots on it. This one has 13 spots on it and do a lot more. So, what I'm going to do, it already has an analysis visor and a scanner like we had before. It's got the mining beam like we have over there. It does not have the terrain manipulator, but we have a bolt caster. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead into our multi-tool. We're going to uninstall this, put it in our inventory. We're going to go in here and we're going to exchange it. I'm not going to keep our old original we can exchange it and get some money for it, and this will give us a much better multi-tool. And we'll put this in here. And we have two supercharged slots, so I'm going to leave the bolt caster here. See, the scanner range gets increased. So for now, I'm going to move the bolt caster out, put our mining beam in, and it'll give us some more power and more juice for our scanner. And you see, this goes in uncharged, so you'll have to recharge it. There you go. So we got a much better multi-tool now. So this will be very, very handy. We got some good damage potential out of it too. So that's excellent. Very good find. I like that. I wish it was an A-class or an S-class, but hey, we got it for a good good chunk of change there. Good amount of money. Excellent. Glad we did that. Glad we stopped by. All right, we're fast coming to a close of this episode, folks. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our base. Now we could fly there if we wish. 
But the best way to go back right now is since you went ahead and put a teleporter down, and you can teleport to a base that doesn't have one. Keep that in mind, you can teleport to a base that you've created that does not have a teleport module. It'll just put you next to your base computer. But since we do have one there, we're gonna go ahead and teleport back. See? Warp to base. And we've now completed that portion of the storyline. So we're going to bring this episode to a close. It's been another, another hour. And hopefully you're watching the series that everybody's doing. Everybody's now got the um, speed runs going on the Expedition series. So hopefully you've been watching them. Um, as the Expedition will be soon coming to a close as of when this episode is released. So, and here we go. If you're wondering where your ship is, let's take a look around. It's right back there. Let's take a look. See? There it is. Very nice. It's not storming, is it? It's just raining. A little bit of misty out. That's nice. Shouldn't have any more storms here after this. So let's go to our base computer and get the last portion of our mystery solved. Archives terminated. Select new task. We're going to bin begin decryption. Decoding. 16, 16, 16. Message follows. The traveler finds their wings. Fly to us and claim your place among the stars. So... That's taking us to another location that we're going to find a life form supposedly at. And it's over that way. Not very far away at all. 37 minutes walking time, but we'll obviously take our ship. So we're going to continue with this uh, run through. We should be able to get our hyperdrive unit in this next episode, as well as travel to different systems, obviously. So we're going to have some fun coming up and building out our base. I want to thank you all for watching. Again, please hit the like and subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next episode. And again, if there's any questions, drop them in the comments section. Take care, everybody.